Hey everyone, Will Falcon here. So we now have B200 support on the Lightning platform. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. You can come here, click GPUs, select B200. Um, you can try interruptible or not. Uh, these will, you'll be able to get these a lot faster when they're not interruptible. Press confirm and then hit start. Um, so I've already got one running here. So it'll take about 10 minutes right now um, to come up. And, um, and so here it is. So we're in a B200. Right, um, I can get a standalone terminal here if you want to see how that works. Great, um, so you see that I've got 188 gigs. And then um, you can also connect your local ID, right? So I can code from my local VS code, my local cursor, or, um, or Windsurf as well. So it's the same process here. So I'm, I'm gonna just do that here um, since, uh, we're gonna go through this more local experience here. Okay, great. So I've got um, PyTorch Lightning here. All right. So uh, you see that the remote environment, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Yeah. Great, so you see that uh, I've got the machines here. Um, this is, like I said, this is my local IDE, right? Um, this will work with um, Cursor or Windsurf as well. So, um, so I've copied PyTorch Lightning on here. Um, so if you go to PyTorch Lightning, this is our open source framework for training models, and it automates uh, all these things around distributed training and so on. So it's perfect for what I'm doing here. So um, all I did was copy that example here, and then I'm just gonna run this, right? And the beauty of PyTorch Lightning is that it's going to automatically detect the GPUs that it's on, and then automatically distribute itself. Uh, now, this is a toy model, like this is a encoder, decoder, um, architecture type model that's very, very tiny, like probably, it tells you right here, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it'll print the number of parameters. I think it's a few million parameters. So um, it will take, um, if you're used to PyTorch Lightning, like it's pretty much immediately starts. Um, on Blackwell, there are some delays, um, I guess, because it's a newer chip. So it takes a little bit longer to start. So we might have to wait um, a few seconds here. So I'm just gonna pause, uh, it's 718 right now. So I'm gonna pause until this starts, which will be like a minute or two. All right, well, spoke too soon. It only took like 10 seconds to start, so here we are. But notice this is only 100,000 parameters, so this is a really, really, like, tiny, tiny model. It's not really something that I need H100s for, I'm uh, sorry, B200s for, right? Um, I can tell you right now, B200s, our estimates so far is that they're about 3x faster. Um, so let me show you here, clusters. So we've done benchmarking already. So we have a compiler called Thunder, which I encourage you to check out. Uh, here, and um, and Lightning Thunder is our it's a compiler that we co-developed with NVIDIA for making these models really fast, and it works really well uh, on the next generation of hardware, especially the B two hundred. So, um, so we have um, results from from that benchmarking here, and so you see, for example, that the H one hundred this is PyTorch Eager, so without PyTorch Compile, uh, sorry Torch Compile, that's kind of the baseline, right? So these are certain models that we benchmark this on and then the H100. So you can see that the B200, um, so I compare ye yellow to blue, it's gonna, yellow to blue is gonna give you like the speed up of B200 over H100. So, you know, I'll find the biggest gap here, for example. So this one right here. Um, so this is 3.2 uh, and one. So it's about three X faster than the H100, right? On average, this is maybe one and a half, two X. So I would say on average, somewhere between two and three and a half times faster. And then, yeah, when you mix in our compiler, you can get up to like four and a half right now, five uh, X over the, the speed up there. Um, this is not using our compiler for the moment. But um, yeah, so in the studio, B200 is great to use because I can see all the utilization stuff up here, power, VRAM, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so let me try to max out the VRAM for you guys here. So I'm just gonna increase, I'm gonna make up um, Parameters. So if you guys, if some of you are like near to AI and you haven't seen like actually what parameters are, you know, if you if you step into the, the model code itself, you'll end up at these layers that actually talk about uh, the actual parameters here. So, um, so this is the this are two matrices that are being multiplied that give you the the parameters, right? And so I'm gonna just crank this up. Uh, let's see, ten thousand. Let's do a hundred thousand, and then by a hundred thousand. So these two dimensions here have to match, right? And then let's do the same thing here, 100,000, 100,000, right? Um, that's gonna be way more in terms of parameters. 
And so, um, and so you'll start to, oh, I guess I'm still running on the VS Code here. So let me control C that. Okay, great. Yeah, you know, it's funny because a lot of people want to use their local IDs, which is great. Um, but, uh, you know, Lightning, we've kind of gotten pretty used to using uh, remote IDs now. And, like, the, the studio itself is pretty good. So I actually encourage you guys to try it out. Like, a few years ago, I think we were all kind of skeptical about using um, IDs um, on the web. Um, but, you know, technology's gotten really, really good at it since then. So actually, let me kill the Python processes here real quick because I got too greedy with the other one. All right, so that just nuked everything. Um, okay, so here we go. So I'm, I'm basically what I'm doing right now is I'm increasing the batch size. Um, this is, I think, one, one really good benefit of doing kind of development and iterating on model training and, and model serving on the studio is the fact that I can debug like this interactively, right? And then from here, I can go ahead and distribute this across like a bunch of nodes. So uh, I'm going to show you how I can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and install this here. So this will let you scale out multi-node. Now, I'm not going to do a distributed run on B200s because it's going to cost like, you know, millions of dollars right now. Um, just for this demo, I'm just going to show you kind of how to do it. This is across eight GPUs here, right? But if I want to distribute this across more nodes, I just choose this. Then um, I'm not going to choose the... And th this is another benefit of the studio is you can actually swap hardware very easily. So like the T4s are cheap, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use interruptible. So I can actually do distributed training on interruptible instances like this. So I'm going to choose L4s, and I'm going to choose four nodes. This is going to be 16 nodes here. Uh, and I'm running this code. So as long as it's PyTorch writing, it'll just work. And if you're using JAX or TensorFlow or, or anything else, or PyTorch, it'll also work. You just need to put in the environment variables. So this actually submits the multi-node run, and you see the four nodes coming up here. Anyways, so the, the model's training, and you can see that I'm at 78 million parameters now. Um, so this is the utilization, uh, which is surprise, shockingly high for such a simple model. Um, so, but my VRAM is still pretty low, but you saw that I started to eat into it a little bit. So I need to like 10X this thing. Let's see, 70, I'm just gonna add a few more zeros here. Um, if I add too many, I'm gonna out of memory, right? It's gonna kill all the processes again. Someone at NVIDIA watching this is like, oh no. It's fine, guys. Um, okay. Here we go. Let's see how many parameters we get now. Yeah, and in the meantime, you've got the distributed training run. So um, you can think about it this way. This is an interactive environment, the studio, and then I've submitted an async job, right? And that job is running distributed in four separate nodes but um, it copied the studio environment into each node, so I don't have to actually set anything up. And it'll actually connect, it'll do the interconnects, um, it'll co-locate everything, it sets the whole thing up out of, out of the box, so you can just kind of, you know, for, from our perspective, training on one GPU versus a thousand GPUs is really no different uh, when you're using the platform as well. Okay, so let's see if this thing's gonna start now. Maybe I, uh, this Python killing thing is not fun, but let's see. All right, I'm gonna pause this while it starts because it might take a few seconds to do what it's doing. All right, so I ended up changing the prams a bit. Um, I suspect it has to do with these uh, huge matrices. So most models don't just have a few layers like this. They actually have thousands of layers. Anyways, so uh, yeah, so B200s, please check them out. Um, they're right here. They're great. The GPUs are available. Um, you can get them in about 10 minutes. So, uh, so yeah, try it out.